Dear colleague, in this lecture you will find the assemble of Richard Mundinga stereotactic system, also known as the RM stereotactic system. Before to start the assemble, I would like to give a brief information about components of the frame. The RM stereotactic system basically consists of a head ring and an aiming bow unit with instrument carrier. This is the half open ceramic ring type. The posts used for the fixation at the ceramic ring are made of carbon fiber. There are assortment of different lengths of optipins like 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 millimeters. Mayfield clamp affixes the stereotactic system to the operating table. There are various sizes of vertical arcs like 90, 110 and 145 degrees. There are two types of dovetail guide. The short one is 50 mm and the long one is 190 mm. Now let's start to assemble the RM frame. As I said before, the RM stereotactic system basically consists of a head ring and an aiming bow unit with instrument carrier. So the assemble of the RM frame consists of two parts. Let's look to the first part, the assemble of the head ring. You see the necessary equipment to assemble head ring on the screen. First, we need to take the ceramic head ring. There are two sides of the ring, the cranial and the caudal side. We need to put the four fixing posts into the holes and use the screws to tighten it to the frame. After the four fixing posts implanted, the optipins implant into the holes of the fixing posts. You can use the upper or the lower holes. Let's look to the assemble of the head ring by a video. First, we need to take the ceramic head ring. There are two sides of the ring, the cranial and the caudal side. We need to put the four fixing posts into the holes and use the screws to tighten it to the frame. The screws must be placed to the deep side of the nuts. We need to tighten the screws by a socket wrench. After the four fixing posts implanted, the optipins implant into the holes of the fixing posts. You can use the upper or the lower holes. The torque wrench with 70 Nm limit can be used for the tightening the optipins. We need to fit the head ring to the head ring holder. In this placement, the lines on the head ring and the head ring holder must come across. We need to tighten the screws by a socket wrench. Finally, we can implant the localizer.
Let's look to the second part, the assemble of the aiming bow unit. You see the necessary equipment to assemble of the aiming bow unit on the screen. First, we need to fit the head ring to the head ring holder. In this placement, the lines on the head ring and the head ring holder must come across. Then we need to implant the locking bow for open stereotactic head ring over the open head ring. To install the RM unit on the stereotactic head ring, first we need to fit the U shaped base on the ring with the U shaped opening foot wards. Then we need to implant the vertical arc support into the hole in the U shaped base and tighten the screw on the U shaped base. The aiming bow unit of the RM covers all individual parts required for fixing the aiming bow to the head ring. Insert the aiming bow with the instrument carrier mounted so that the two treated points on the left and the right fit into the receptacles on the stereotactic head ring. There are various sizes of vertical arcs and can be used depending on the vertical angle required. There are two metal pins at 90 degrees on the inner side of the aiming bow for hooking on the vertical arc. Fix the vertical arc to the aiming bow by one of these two metal pins. Whether the vertical arc is fixed to the right or left pin will depend on which hemisphere the target point is located. Then push the vertical arc into the vertical arc support and secure it with the knurled screw. Insert the dovetail guide into the groove provided in the instrument carrier and secure the carrier with the knurled screw on the outside. The instrument holder can then be inserting into the dovetail guide then fix it with the long slanted screw. Insert the depth control guide into the secure aperture on the left side of the instrument carrier. There is a notch on the lower border of the depth control guide and it needs to be set in the square aperture. Push it until a clearly perceptible engagement occurs. Then place the depth control guide stop up to the depth control guide and push it. The chamfered part of the depth guide stop is towards the instrument and downwards. Fix this part in position with the nerd screw on the depth control guide stop. Let's look to the assemble of the aiming bow unit by a video. First, we need to implant the locking bow for open stereotactic head ring over the open head ring. To install the RM unit on the stereotactic head ring, first we need to fit the U-shaped base on the ring with the U-shaped opening foot wards. Then we need to implant the vertical arc support into the hole in the U-shaped base and tighten the screw on the U-shaped base. The aiming bow unit of the RM covers all individual parts required for fixing the aiming bow to the head ring. Insert the aiming bow with the instrument carrier mounted so that the two treated points on the left and the right fit into the receptacles on the stereotactic head ring. The graduated divisions on the aiming bow must face upwards and the plus sign must be on the right and the minus sign on the left. Screw the treated pins in up to the limit. There are various sizes of vertical arcs 
and can be used depending on the vertical angle required. There are two metal pins at 90 degrees on the inner side of the aiming bow for hooking on the vertical arc. Fix the vertical arc to the aiming bow by one of these two metal pins. Whether the vertical arc is fixed to the right or left pin will depend on which hemisphere the target point is located. Then push the vertical arc into the vertical arc support and secure it with the knurled screw. There are two types of dovetail guide. The short one is 50mm and the long one is 190mm. Insert the dovetail guide into the groove provided in the instrument carrier and secure the carrier with the knurled screw on the outside. The instrument holder can then be inserting into the dovetail guide then fix it with the long slanted screw. Insert the depth control guide into the skewer aperture on the left side of the instrument carrier. There is a notch on the lower border of the depth control guide and it needs to be set in the skewer aperture. Push it until a clearly perceptible engagement occurs. Then place the depth control guide stop up to the depth control guide and push it. The chamfered part of the depth guide stopped is towards the instrument and downwards. Fix this part in position with the nerd screw on the depth control guide stop. Let's assemble the frame on a human head anatomy model. If you want, you can mount the adjustable probe holder to the dovetail guide before the mounting the dovetail guide alone to the aiming bow. Insert the aiming bow with the instrument carrier mounted so that the two treated points on the left and the right fit into the receptacles on the stereotactic head ring. The graduated divisions on the aiming bow must face upwards and the plus sign must be on the right and the minus sign on the left. There are two metal pins at 90 degrees on the inner side of the aiming bow for hooking on the vertical arc. Fix the vertical arc to the aiming bow by one of these two metal pins. Then push the vertical arc into the vertical arc support and secure it with the knurled screw. Insert the depth control guide into the skewer aperture on the left side of the instrument carrier. Then place the depth control guide stop up to the depth control guide and push it. The chamfered part of the depth guide stopped is towards the instrument and downwards. The lateral tilt of the carrier adjusted with the adjuster screw marked NS. The vertical tilt of the carrier adjusted with adjuster screw marked NV. The depth adjusted with the adjuster screw marked NT. We can set the vertical angle by HW. We can set the lateral angle by SW. Let's look to the adjustment of the coordinates on the frame by a video. The lateral tilt of the carrier adjusted with the adjuster screw marked NS. The vertical tilt of the carrier adjusted with adjuster screw marked NV. The depth adjusted with the adjuster screw marked NT. We can set the vertical angle by HW. We can set the lateral angle by SW. Vernier scales are attached to the corresponding scales on the RM system. The Vernier scale 
allow surgeons to define small measurement units that can no longer be read on the main scale. It allows calculation of tens of a millimeter. In order to be able to read the very fine degree divisions, the two vernier scales in NS and NV have been provided with magnifying lenses.